Hi there guys, Simon Briley here with Paradise Try. We've got Scott Hill. We're here in our part three of our um, third and final interview with Scott out at the Ironman World Triathlon Championships in Kona, Hawaii. Scott, so uh, how are you feeling two days out from competition day? Um, I feel fine. I mean, the last few days has been relatively easy um, in sort of, sort of volume and intensity of training. Uh, which is a big change from the norm and many athletes if not all um, understand that process you know of, of sort of calming down before the race uh, and mentally you know it's it's hard and you, know, you just kind of have to accept the fact that you need to rest your body and ensure it's ready to prepare on on the day sure absolutely so we've been covering over in the the two earlier parts uh, we looked at the swim we looked at the bike and um, we're now looking at um, the running side of things also we will mention a few of the uh, nutritional basis which is in triathlon world that is the fourth element of, uh, of a triathlon if you if you want to call it that yeah. on the run side of things obviously this is the most demanding upon our body um, within um, any sort of activity or any sort of sport. Um, what what type of things have you been doing to try and acclimatize to that here, here in, in Kona Hawaii um, so here we've just been doing uh, brick sessions okay. um, as we were doing the UK granted they've been a lot shorter than they have been uh, out here just to kind of get you to that transition ensure that my body's ready to transit from bike to run in this climate as well uh, and again you know very much like the bike just making sure everything's working properly um, for me uh, um, and that I can acclimatize the best I can and be ready for that on the day uh, you know we've, we've mentioned you know the, the different parts of the island as well you know and for that I've been going into um, the energy lab to run in there as well just to ensure that you know I'm, I'm putting myself into the, into what's known to be one of the hardest parts of the run itself on the course. Tell us a little bit about the energy lab. Um, There's this yeah, phrase, energy lab. Yeah, the energy lab is um, between the airport and Kona itself. It's about six miles from here, or just under, um, is what I've caught the other day. Um, yeah, it, it's known to be um, the part of the run that will take the most out of athletes. Um, it's tough in there, you know, it's, it's where... Um, I mean, very much like the bike on that side of McQueen K, you're not going to escape the elements in there. Sure. Uh, and obviously the island in there uses a lot of the um, solar panels and they use the climate, you know, from the sea, uh, the sun and everything else because they can capture it in that area. Um, it's open, it's exposed. So the island use that as an energy source for them, hence the energy lab. Um, so it's, yeah, it's tough in there and it's, it's known to zap people as they go in and come out because it's, it's an in and out circuit. That, that's towards the back end of the 26 miles um, that we're that we're looking at. Yeah, there, so. so we're looking um, could be slightly wrong, but I think it's around about 18 miles ish. Okay, around about that point on the run itself. So you're this 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 um, renowned 20 mile mark, or that, that we that uh, within a marathon, those that run marathons out there, your 20 mile mark is where people talk about that you're either hitting a, a mental brick wall or certainly a physical brick wall. But to be able to prepare yourself throughout in an Ironman world to get to that stage and still, still be strong and to get yourself a home for that last 10 kilometers, six miles in particular. Yeah, fortunately here for the run, there's a feed station every mile, um, which is, is here because of the, the, uh, you know, the humidity and heat that you've got to deal with. So as a safety aspect more than anything, I'd, I'd, I'd say. Um, you don't get that in other Ironman races, not every mile. Um, so it's, it's nice to have that. Although, you know, if, if you're conditioned to the environment, you're not going to need that feed station every mile. Uh, the pros have a bit of a different setup what they do but for age groupers you know it, it's there for them every mile if they so wish uh, and age groupers now tend to or you know you'll see a lot of them now that will do a run walk program on the marathon and that's not uncommon um, so yeah feed stations are something they can walk every mile if they so sure. need to uh, and you know you're in there you'll get a mix of uh, cold sponges um, ice uh, and any drinks and your, your food as well mm. um, so mm. yeah there's a good mix of things in there for people every mile should they need oh. in the Ironman um, racing scenario you have the opportunity to have what we call special needs which is your, your anything that you would require that uh, as an athlete personal um, some people get on with Red Bull some people don't get on with Coca-Cola you know um, and different aspects like some people don't get on with the with the race nutrition sponsor and what they're feeding out there is there anything that you have in your special needs bag or that you you rely on or that you carry yourself no so I don't use special needs never have um, I'm quite fortunate that my body will take most things um, you know it's kind of I'd say for an age group you've kind of got to 
trial and error a lot of things um, and you'll find what works for you what doesn't work for you um, the only thing I have noticed that doesn't work for me is taking caffeine on the bike sure um, I if I do that and then on the run side of it that does have an effect on me that my body doesn't like uh, and that's a lesson that I have learned uh, and since learning that lesson I've not gone back to it uh, and, and I've not had any problems since um, but yeah as for the the fee stations here the products they use I'm fine I'm happy with them um, so it should be good. good good excellent now on the run how do you pace a marathon within an Ironman but also here within Kona so this is something that you know I'm still working on I'm relatively new to triathlon you could say um, having only started triathlon in 2014 we're now in 2018 you know, I'm still a newbie in some cases yes granted I've done quite a few races um, but I'm still learning and everyone learns you know whether you're an athlete a coach whatever it may be you're still learning absolutely I still feel that I've got a lot more to learn on the run and a lot more to give uh, I can go out and run you know sub three hour marathons um, without having a bike um, with having a long bike I've noticed an effect on me that um, I think can be improved or I know can be improved it's just going to take time to get that improvement that, that I want and I desire uh, and that's just down to commitment and, and work I suppose historically I sort of run around about a 320 marathon still after cycling the distance mm. um, I, st I think I can do better than that in the future sure. will that happen out here probably not uh, and that's just down to you know the environment that we're in um, it's not it's not a place to PB here um, it's a place to survive yeah, yeah, you can now, it's between now and uh, race day, um, we've done a swim today. Uh, we did another swim uh, out to the coffee boat here. We did about a thousand, about a kilometre, a thousand metres. Um, nice and steady. There's a bit of a swell in the sea today. Well, quite a swell. Yeah. Um, what else would you be looking to do uh, for the rest of the day today and also then um, tomorrow, which is the, the day before the race? And um, So today itself, you know, it's just, just to sort of finalise what I need to do have a look through the Ironman race pack and just make sure I haven't missed anything um, and start prepping to come down and, and set everything up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow being the day before the race itself, you know, and, and behind us now they're setting up all the bike racking for that. Um, so tomorrow afternoon I'll be coming down to do that. So today I'll start the process of making sure everything's ready for that. I'm not a person that likes to do things last minute. I like to plan Good. and prep it and get it done early and, and you know, and know everything's there in place. Mm. And being military, I kind of I kind of have to lay everything out in a sequence on, on the floor and that's just something that we are sort of taught from day one of a military career uh, and it's something that I've just carried on doing through this and it works for me but it's great to have that discipline and have that regimental routine that r routine in itself um, because you can check it off mentally and also physically exactly you know and, and I have in the past uh, I know I've got everything right I've took pictures of it you know and in, in races after that then I've gone back to that picture and thought right. well you know right what did I have last time on that run and I'll look at the picture and be like right there's the trainers there's the swim cap oh, not swim cap but, <laughs> but there's the trainers you know there's my running hat there's some sunglasses if you socks knew them. as well socks yeah and you all know, your nutrition laid out and that you know and then I'll look at that picture and I'll make sure that it's set up for that race and I do the same with the bike and the swim I know I've got everything then great uh, great yeah. so you may see if you follow anyone out on the social media especially uh, Iron Hill um, on Instagram and on Facebook um, Scott uh, you'll see the the your friends and your families will be posting up their uh, race numbers their kits out on the bed and it, it may look to some of you that don't take part in triathlon as though it's a little bit silly but you've just highlighted that fact of that you're checking that off mentally and physically. It's a great routine. And for those people racing out there on this weekend, I'd encourage you to actually get into that routine. It's never too late to do something like that. It's not changing anything. It's just actually giving you that peace of mind. I mean, the last thing you want to do is, you know, get to the, you coming onto your bike or your run and, and realizing you've forgotten a pair of socks mm. um, and you need it. Um, you know, and for Ironman distance, I'd advise wearing socks short distance you know you don't really need to get need to do that but iron distance i think it's something that's quite important a pair of socks and you know that's always something people miss um you know just on general you know sure packing sure. generally uh, fantastic yeah. scott it's been great to obviously be here to support you um it's been it's been great to be able to you to share your tips and your pointers with us um i'm sure there's quite a number of uh, groups and um, people out there that you'd like to thank um, sponsors and obviously RAF in, in particular um, just share a little bit about who who has actually given you that and got you to this point in itself yeah so I mean I've been quite fortunate really uh, it's difficult for you know age groupers um, to get sort of support and stuff like that um, fortunately being a member of the RAF that you know I've had great support there from them um, I've had you know race skin sketches um, zone three you know they've been supporting me for a few years now um, and the Royal British Legion as well been fantastic so yeah 
Fantastic. You do a bit of coaching yourself in the RAF. You're involved uh, with the, the different groups. You go away yeah. to Mallorca every year with the, with the camp there. Um, and that's fantastic to see you putting that back in and obviously returning to the RAF because you don't get paid for that trip, but it, it's giving that, that support and that time that, you, that they've given allocated to you in the past. Yeah, it's something I really enjoy. You know, I, I, like I mentioned before, you know, I've, I kind of fell into triathlon in 2014. You know, I'm only four years on. Since then, I've done you know, my coaching courses. You know, I've worked with civilian um, triathlon clubs um, and obviously the RAF triathlon club, which is something that... Um, yeah, we're always trying to, you know, sort of grow and advance and, mm. and move forward with every year, you know. And like I said before, you know, as athletes and coaches, you always learn. Uh, so it's important to give back to them and you know, for the athletes to, to talk to us as well so that we can improve, you know, what we're delivering. Um, the REF club is quite large. We have over 700 athletes and, you know, we run Mallorca training camps annually and um, training camps within the UK on weekends, normally about twice a year. Um, and it's great to always see new faces on of that. Of course, well. of course. Fantastic. Scott, all the best for Saturday. Thank you. Um, you're in a good place. You're good, good mentally, physically. And um, we're, we're going to be out there supporting. Um, you can track it on, I believe that there is full tracking on Ironman.com for the Hawaii Ironman Championships. Your race number, Scott? Yes, yeah, so my race number is 1661. 1661, okay. Excellent. There's about 2,500, almost up to 3,000 uh, racing out here at the Ironman World Championships in Kona, Hawaii. Thanks very much, Scott, for these past uh, couple of days on the interviews. And um, rest up, put your feet up, and yeah. relax. Great. Yeah. All the best. Thank you.